here, I will briefly discuss what I will be focusing on for the final group project. I will be researching the female presence in the gaming industry, mainly in the arts, like female concept artists, game designers, and programmers. For example, in the UK, only 6% are female, and the view of people in the UK is that women don't like technical careers, while others argue that most girls aren't given Game Boys as children but are given Barbies and argue that the issue is deep-rooted within society itself. So I've changed my topic a little bit and since we're looking at the representation of women and minorities in the video game industry, I've kind of decided to look at um, LGBT representation in video games and historically what that's looked like and then now with more contemporary games how that is changing. Um, so historically a lot of games maybe they're just kind of hinted at LGBT characters or um, kind of use them as jokes or um, or oftentimes they're even censored in the games. Uh, characters have to be specifically signified that they're male or female. Really kind of like perpetuating the whole gender as a binary idea. Um, now there's a lot of games though that are coming out that don't assume gender as a binary and are doing some interesting things to kind of push back against that assumption. I'm focusing my part of the essay on female gamer stereotypes. The typical female gamer stereotype ranges between the nerdy sexy gamer and the gamer with no life. In reality, this is not the case with 52% of gamers being female and the number only growing according to The Guardian. Female gamers endure sexual harassment online because of the over-sexualized stereotype and the gamer girl in image contests that only promote, promote the stereotype. Sexism in video games and female stereotypes are often hand in hand. For my part of the represent representation of women in gaming, I'm going to be focusing more on the business side of representation. So females working in the gaming industry has doubled since 2009, bringing it up to 22%, but it's still men's world, man's world and they're still at 76%. Um, I'm also going to talk about that and like what kind of games women have helped create it. And then I'm going to focus on the 10 most powerful women in the industry, which uh, a couple include Kristen Duvall, um, Tracy Fullerton, and Chelsea Howie. And I'll go more in depth in the paper, but that is just a general outlook on what I will be writing about in the paper. Thanks. Women protagonists in video games, the women portrayed are mostly either at either ends of the scale. They are either portrayed as smart, sexy warriors or girls in frilly clothes. Those portrayed as strong warriors mostly fight and defeat the weaker men. Those in frilly clothes are usually saved by the men. Some examples of these characters are for warrior women, Cortana from the Halo video game series. Cortana is Master Chief's AI companion during his battles against the Covenant. She is portrayed as a hologram and her physical characteristics are a woman in her mid-twenties. Um, her purpose as an intellectual AI is to help Master Chief get out of sticky situations, always talking, him, talking to him throughout the video game series. In the end of her existence, she ends up sacrificing herself so Master Chief can live. Another character is Laura Croft from the Tomb Raider series. She's portrayed as a smart, beautiful, athletic English archaeologist adventurer. She travels to ancient tombs that are highly dangerous, um, and obviously she's raiding tombs. She has a big impact on the gaming world as well as the comic book world and the film industry. Some other leading warrior women are Tifa Lockhart, Final Fantasy VII, and Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. There are many video games with lead women in them, but the most popular lead damsel in distress is Princess Peach. Princess Peach is Mario's lover who he must save. She's the main character in her own games, such as Princess, Pe Princess Peach Dress Up or Princess Peach Adventures. The only game I could find with her as any sort of fighter was 
Super Smash Bros. Overall, the most popular video games with female leads are games with female warriors fighting evil. Okay, so I'm talking about race in gaming. Awesome. Except, well, not really. Because the relationship between race and gaming sucks right now. If this is a surprise to you, I think throwing out some examples would be a good place to start. Uh, like pretty much every other facet of entertainment that isn't a sport, black people are underrepresented in games. There are, and I'm being exact right now, I actually counted, 124 black characters with major roles in video games. Not random NPCs, not that dude you ran over in GTA, 124 major characters. And most of them are side characters. And I didn't even include the stereotypes, which would lower the number even further. Stereotypes, you ask? Samar, what kind of stereotypes are you talking about? Well, sit down, students, because it's time to do some learning. So they vary in intensity. You've got your Barretts, for example. I mean, look at that guy. He's literally just Mr. T with a gun for an arm. A gun for an arm. Do you know what kind of message that sends? I can't even go outside in a black Pokemon hoodie at night without getting hassled. Imagine if I have an actual gun arm. Then there are the more subtle characters, like Saz. Saz? 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 Whatever. He's straight up the only black dude in the game, and he's got an afro and dual wield pistols. Nope. Nothing alarming about that. Not at all. Although to be fair, Saj was probably the most engaging character in Final Fantasy XIII, but that's like saying the most engaging thing about your table is the dust that flies off of it sometimes. But I digress. Now I'm black and Muslim because just like my video games, I like playing life on very hard mode, so I know better than most that it's not just black people that are getting shafted in video games. Take, oh, I don't know, the sixth best selling game series of all time, Call of Duty. You know, that series where in most of the games you kill terrorists from some nondescript Arab country that's doing, I don't know, something bad. Try not to think about it. Let your God-fearing American jingoism take the wheel. It knows what it's doing. Just, just a side note, one of my favorite parts of Call of Duty is when I played with my friends and stopped to read some of the signs in the nondescript Arab country's nondescript Arab town. The Arabic on the signs didn't even mean anything. It was actually gibberish. Holy crap! Let's move on from Call of Duty because I'm actually starting to get heated. Let's look at some other stuff instead. There's the Zelda series where the only dark-skinned characters are thieves and the one major character that's dark-skinned is the villain of the game. There's Resident Evil 5 which has you killing a bunch of black zombies in Africa. And if you played Resident Evil, you're probably going to tell me that it makes sense in the narrative. And I get that. But that doesn't make it any less creepy. Hell, even Animal Crossing fails in this regard. If I'm playing a game that labels itself as a life simulator and lets me do menial life-based tasks like paying off my mortgage and watering flowers, you can't just cut out one of the biggest parts of my life, my skin color. I'm already tired of doing my best white guy impression to appease uncomfortable people in my university. This is the least you could give me, Nintendo. Alright, alright, you're probably thinking. This is a whole lot of complaining and not a whole lot of what we should do. And you're right, disembodied audience. Every complaint should come with a potential solution in tow. But first, let's talk about some happy things. There are good minority characters in gaming. Lee Everett, my absolute favorite character from my absolute favorite game, is a great one to start. James Heller isn't bad, even if his game is kinda crappy. David Anderson, while still a sidekick, plays a major role in Mass Effect. Plus, the guy was voiced by Goliath, which is awesome. So what do all these characters have in common? They're minority characters that aren't defined by their minority status. Lee Everett is just a guy trying to survive in the zombie apocalypse. James Heller is trying to avenge his wife and daughter. David Anderson is trying to save the Earth. And their actions are what define their character, not their color or stereotypes that would be associated with it. Nobody is saying, All aboard the coal train, baby! Or dropping weird slang every four seconds, or wearing an afro, or all that other garbage. The only way we can create more characters like Lee Everett and Co. is by being more mindful of what we do when we decide to put minority characters in games. There are two ways to go about doing that. Ignore it entirely if it doesn't play into the plot, or if it does, make sure you write it really, really well. Because race creates powerful emotions from people, and while it can be a great vehicle for storytelling, it can also devolve into garbage pretty quickly. But I'm going to start here because we could talk about this forever. Bye.